is hard to live by, but it is impossible to live without it. You can live in this world wanting to make progress and not change. That's right, yes. If your love level for God has diminished, it is time for you to return to your first love. Amen. Get ready for next week Sunday. Amen. I want to really define to you, I saw something in the Bible which should me change my life forever. Love, this love, love business we throw about. Next week we will really discover what really love is. It's, 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 I tell you, I'm wetting your appetite for next week Sunday. Put on your best clothes. If it's three piece suit, put on double week. I'll tell you. <laughs> next week, those of you who say I'm in love, I will teach you what love is really, really is. Those of you who say I love God, I will show you whether you really love God or not for the next three weeks. I saw something in the Bible about love. Some of you will stop throwing words about, I love you, Lord. I can see God saying, shut up. <laughs> you don't love me. You're joking. You, Americans will say, you're tripping. <laughs> so get ready for next week. He said, thou see this. You love God, then love him with all your heart. All your soul. All your might. All your strength. That is when you say you love God. You mean it. All your heart. All your soul. All your might. All your strength. Just in case there's somebody else say, oh, my heart is all this love, love business about God. Well, listen, you're already here. You better hear it. Because you'll continue to hear it. Till it comes out of your ears. <laughs> because the more you love God, the things that you are looking for, the secrets you are looking for, He only reveals it to those who are in love. Listen to me. God only reveals and downloads secrets for your life when you love Him really. If you don't love Him really, He will attend to you. Download those secrets and look at them. Forget it. This coming year is a year of really, I mean, really, really. I mean, really, really, really. Really, I may be joking, but I know what I'm talking about. I say, really, Lord God, yes. with all your heart, yes. not some. Mm. You can't love your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife more than God. It's an abomination. Yes. Yes. You won't be able to love your wife properly if you really don't love God properly. Yes. Because Jesus has loved your wife as Christ loved the church. That is the standard. The standard is to love God. Love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it begins from there. The only way you can really love your wife and be married for 50 years or 34 or 20 or 25 or 50 is God. Yes. Because there's some things you see about your husband that sometimes you wonder, did I really marry you? I'm sorry I'm looking at you. <laughs> Did I really decide to marry you? Did I really say yes to you? Was I thinking properly when I said yes? And am I still married to you? She said, you see, see, you can hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not perfect. So and I wonder why she's still married to me. She said, in the love of God. So can you imagine if God was not in the question, I won't qualify at all. I would have been disqualified by now. So ladies and gentlemen, I came to tell you, the first thing you must do, honor God. Honor God. Honor God. By loving Him with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, all your strength. If you really love God, there's nothing He tells you to do that you will complain about. Come to church. What are you doing? Your lover is calling for you. And you are complaining. Your lover said, bring the tithe and offering to my storehouse, not the pastor's storehouse. And no, ah, they have come again. You are really not involved. Quest! I don't like the way you are looking at me. <laughs> you are pretty. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> Amen. Bro, I don't think you are ready for me. Yeah. 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 There's something God spoke to my spirit about that I said, hey. He said, I am wooing you back to myself. I said, wooing? You mean wooing? Wooing me? Woo, woo, wooing. Eh? With fruit pastings. Eh? With whole nut chocolate. If God is wooing you back to himself, he 
must tell you how much he loves you. Every message that comes is geared by God towards bringing you closer to him and him closer to you. So you can be all he called you to be. It's for your benefit. Clap your hands that God is still with you. Oh, I don't like the way you are talking. Would you rather he left you alone where you are? No. Love God. So, success in any new year hinges on doing first things first. If you want to make it in a year ahead, you have to set your priorities and go out all. Go all out to demonstrate your love for God. The women that we have in this house, you, if you tell them you love them, they won't poof. All the women who agree with your heart. Yeah, I told you. You don't tell a woman you love her and she doesn't require proof. She doesn't want only words. Yes, I've heard, I've heard. Do something. Show me, show me. All the women who agree, clap your hands. Show me. Show, show, show me. They do their thing and show me. They don't want words. They have heard many words from many men. Many big words. They want to see you do something that somebody hasn't done before. You do to come back. Yes, you really know. Say, you love me? Show me you love me. Then your finger will show me. See, I'm a man, so the thing will come. You still stiff. God is also telling you, show me. He's coming here. So, are you serving me on contract? When I do this for you, then you will do this for me. When I do this, then you will come to church and make me happy. Is that the way we are? Is that the kind of love relationship we are in with God? So this coming year, honor God. If you want to fulfill your new year goals, honor God. Love God. You can love God and not be speaking to somebody for six weeks. You will see them in you. <laughs> what is that? And then you say, I love you, Lord. Some of you, I thank God that we are in the Old Testament because some people's lips would have been cut off by now. The same lips that say, Chew. They say, I love you, Lord. Today, if you are not, you are quarreling with somebody. When you go home, call the person and tell the person you are forgiving them, but you haven't forgotten. <laughs> Forgive them, but don't give them an opportunity to do what they need again. But forgive them, release them. It's for your own benefit. Don't enter 2008 with unforgiveness and bitterness. I don't carry any bitterness or unforgiveness in any part of my body. You can do anything you want to do. I also love you. It, it does. There's, there's no room for unforgiveness because I'm the one who's going to land in May Day. And you will be free sipping coconut in the Tell me, everybody say, forgive that person. Anyone who has offended you in the year 2007, forgive them and learn from it. Release them. Hmm. Honor God. That's what God expects. So honor Him. Say Amen. amen. Number two. Let me actually finish with this. Listen to this. If we say we really love God, we must go the extra mile when it comes to honoring God. In Proverbs 3 9, one of the ways in which you express you love God, like I said about the ladies, they say prove it. God says, Prove you love me by honoring me with your substance and the first fruits of your increase. Anytime they mention giving in church, the moment your heart says, hmm, that should tell you your love is growing cold. Because when you love God, the next thing you do to prove the love is give. So anytime God demands that you give towards his kingdom, this coming here, don't be Armstrong. This coming here, when God demands of you what he has part of what he has given you, remember that honoring God is demonstrated or proved in giving. Amen. I didn't hear your amen there. Amen. Giving is an expression of your undying, devoted love for God. If we say we love God, we must be willing to give Him our very best. It's not enough to give to God, but we must also do it in an honorable way. Amen. 
When we are presenting Christmas gifts to people, we buy wrappers and sometimes we even buy ribbons and pass on the thing. That is our attitude expressed in action. So the importance of attitude is given. In giving is encapsulated in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, which says, Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful word. Give yeah. So give from your heart. Everybody say from your heart. From your heart. Say from your heart. From your heart. A complaining or indifferent attitude will not make you reap the full blessing of your giving. Yeah. So when you are giving, either give with a cheerful heart or don't give at all. Amen. If you are going to do something for me and you are going to complain, I will do the thing myself. Because I want you to do, everybody who works for me or works around me and works in this church must work 